this, this technology, this capacity to interact with the vacuum, both in your own being, but very specifically in laboratory, leads to technology that will blow your mind. Leads to technology that not only brings us to a capacity of abundance of energy, infinite amount of energy, space drive and so on, but to actually transfer the information from one end of the galaxy to the other end of the galaxy without having to go through all the points in between. And I assure you, although that might sound like far in the future, all this is just around the corner. Now, you know, I wanted to show, well, you know, when you make the calculation, you get the magnetic moment of the atom, and you get all the things you would expect in the atom. But I wanted to say a few things on ancient civilization because when I did this research I was studying in parallel a lot of ancient civilizations. And the reason was is that I realized that if this vacuum structure is really there, if the vacuum is polarized, if it's not just a random mess as in defining quantum theory currently, but actually is the source of the organization of everything, then it must have geometry. It must have a fundamental structure and we need to understand what that structure is. And as I studied ancient civilization, these guys kept on pointing to very fundamental geometries. And they all said, this is the geometry of creation, it's everywhere, this is how creation occurs. And you can find it in almost every ancient civilization around the world. And then they built very giant, well, they built. Let's use that loosely. They might have got some help. You know. And uh, very specific geometries all around the world with very specific intense, you know, uh, focus on very, you know, important texts of, of, uh, that describe this geometry, this fundamental geometry of the vacuum. And I spent many, many years studying them, and I realized that there was a code that was left here by many ancient civilizations. And, you know, I really don't have time in such a short lecture most people that have been to my lectures, they're usually 10 hours long. To actually get into that part of, of the knowledge, but it is evident when you do the research, and you can get my DVD set, and it has like 8 hours of this information, you can get it at the table, you can pre-order it at the table. And um, I discuss all this, because when you look in all these ancient texts, in all these ancient civilizations, it talked about this geometry and gave us all the mathematics, all the equation to solve it. And even gave us some technical knowledge how to build it in laboratory. And do I think that ancient people came out just out of osmosis? Absolutely not. Evidence support very widely that there was some um, advanced civilization around here that were attempting to give us some knowledge about these things, you know? Some of those guys. This is in Re Russia, they just found these skulls not so long ago. And that the geometry was fundamentally embedded in many different ways. You know, this is actually on a pillar in Egypt. It's not etched, it's not carved, it's somehow burned into the atomic structure of the granite pillar in Egypt at the Ozarian temple. Um, then you go to China, you know, the Fu Dog is the guardian of the knowledge. He guards the knowledge under his paw. And then you look under the paw, and sure enough, you get the same geometry. And
And this geometry that I'm talking about is very fundamental and it is a geometry I extrapolated from, uh, from writing concepts of the structure of space-time that demanded a fundamental a geometry that could produce all of the rest of the geometry we see in our universe, in our uh, biology, and in our, uh, in our organization of uh, the universe. And it's based on tetrahedrons. It's a 64 tetrahedron grid. Uh, we have talks coming up in 